everyone. Welcome back to Brand New Take Game Podcast. Excited to get this episode out. Excited because this is basically just a pod daily update, so to speak. We're uh, getting ready to head up to Boyne Mountain to do the Total Archery Challenge. If you go back a couple episodes, you know, I did an epi- a episode on Total Archery Challenge and, and just talked about everything from where it came from to where it is, where it's going. So with that being said, me and Sean Kelly are headed up there. We'll probably see a bunch of people, but uh, let's get into it. I'm going to talk about some of the changes and some of the gear that uh, I just kind of challenged myself to put on and kind of update and get ready for Total Archery Challenge. As always, deer season never ends. Hope you guys enjoy the show. All right, guys, wanted to give you a short little update from HuntStan. As always, I'm an avid user of HuntStan and excited uh, that they have actually, which is crazy because it, they've done such a great job at this, but they are announcing new property data data feature improvements. So they're, they've already introduced some of the improvements to HuntStan Pro, but uh, they already offer the most affordable nationwide private and public lands data. Now we are making it even easier to use this data with HuntStan Pro. So make sure to check out the updates. Use the code TAKEGAME10 to upgrade to the Pro version today. All right, guys, we are back and uh, excited to get this episode out, like I was saying, and kind of excited to get up to TAC. It's Wednesday. We're going to head up there tomorrow. I'm going to head over to Sean Kelly's house tomorrow, and then we're going to drive up. It's a four-hour drive, basically, from my house. It's about, I think it's three hours from Sean's house. So not too bad of a haul, but we'll be up there late tomorrow evening. Later, I should say, evening time. But excited to get up there and kind of get situated. But I wanted to talk about some of the things that I've done uh, this year with changing some of my gear up. And kind of, I use tech as for lack of a better term, like an excuse to kind of get this gear changed and get going on that gear so it's ready for not only tack, but this will be the gear that I'm finalizing for hunting season, so to speak, king boots. But I did go through the paces of actually running some hills. We're lucky enough that I live right next door to a metro park that has like a tobogganing hill. So I just put some miles on, some steps in these boots, just some Under Armors. I didn't go crazy getting anything like Krispies or, or something of that nature. Just due to the fact that I'm spending my time Michigan, Ohio, and this year Iowa. I don't need nothing that extravagant or, you know, just it's not even cost effective, but, you know, just a boot that is beyond my means. Like, I don't need it. So, but these things have been super comfortable. I'm going to, I'm going to run these up in tack as well, but they're, uh, they're uh, basically like, I mean, they feel as good as a tennis shoe. They're the hover soles, which I don't know if you guys have seen the Under Armour hover tennis shoes, but they're amazing. The outside are basically like a Kedora. I think that's how you pronounce it, but like a Carhartt material. So very rugged, very durable, super nice outside to it. Really nice grippy outsole. The bottom sole is uh, just really notched the right way and really receptive like I can feel a lot of what I'm walking on uh it's not too stiff it's not too soft but it, it's a perfect like athletic hiking boot and that's exactly what I wanted so you know I know some of the the challenge some of the courses are pretty long like some of them do have you know a couple miles to them so I'll definitely you know put these hiking boots these under armor through their paces this week up attack but Another thing that I did was I completely, just recently, I'm talking not even two weeks in, changed my site. It was a site that I was looking forward to doing for hunting season, but decided to pull the trigger anyways and get it on the bow, get it on the expedition, and start shooting it. So I actually just have been pacing it out. I'm cutting it close, but uh, shot out to 60 yards last night. But excited that I got the new Excel you know, from the makers of True Ball, but Excel sites, but it's the Accu Hunter. So I did do the single pin. I did do, it's a slider basically, you know. So I've set 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And however you guys want to do it, you can take your 20 and 50 or 30 and 60 and then match up your sight tape. But I did put a lot of work in just getting the windage right, you know, the left and right right, the up and down right, 
all the way out. You know, kept making adjustments, but it's a super, super nice, durable site. Really built well. It's, uh, I'm trying to think what, uh, I didn't get the 19,000. I got the 10,000 pin option in green. And I will say, I didn't know the last couple of years they've come out with some, you know, new technology in fiber optics. This thing is lit, man. This site is so, uh, you know, like I said, so well made. It's geared right. Even if you don't have this, the, I'll call them the safeties on for your windage or your elevation, that stuff does not move. You physically have to take your hand, turn the knob to get that stuff to move. So it's very well made. But they do have locks on them, and the locks are just absolutely, uh, they're ironclad. Once you lock those down, th- those things are not moving. And that was an issue I was having with my other site. It was locked down, but there was a rattle to it, and it just drove me nuts. Every time you shot an arrow, you would hear a tink tink from my elevation knobs. There was a top and a bottom round knobs, and they moved constantly. You could not get them locked in doesn't matter who it is or you know who made it but it was just an issue i seemed to have on my site which was just super aggravating so excited to be running this excel accu hunter um i'm a big fan of single pins i'm a big fan of slide sites and uh it's just really cool to uh to to see the difference in just what a couple years on sites does but really looking forward to testing out the site tape you know and kind of putting that through the paces as well because you know, I'm, I'll have a sight type, sight tape zero to a hundred. We're gonna have all kinds of different shots of tack, and like I said, I'm just using this as a challenge to get ready for, you know, my own personal challenge. Let's say to get ready for hunting season, just to make improvements and to see what I can do, see how far I can stretch it out comfortably. But as I was saying, guys, that uh, the sight is just so so cool. The windage lock is like a it's a green push pin, basically a big one, but it's a gun style push pin. You push it in, you lock, and that push pin is engineered to where the knob you would turn, it slides right in there. So that knob it is now locked, completely locked. So that's really nice. Another thing is it, the first axis on this, it, the adjustment needs no shims ever, which is really cool. It ha- also has, which I was telling you about, the elevation lock lever. It's a much better design. It's green as well, so, you you know, both those green, you know, uh, locks are very visible by the eye, which I really like. So you can always kind of, like, just reference it, tell if it's locked or not. Better design, located in the same slide as the uh, elevation knob to the limb archer's movement. So, you know, it just, it is well made, and what I like about it, too, is let's say, you're fumbling around with it and you're holding the bow, There, you can do most of the stuff like with one hand, which I really like. You don't have to put the bow between your legs, push this in or push that out. You you can get to it really easy in one spot and make those adjustments and lock it right back down. So those are just some of the features I really like on that site. And, uh, you know, along with that, uh, I think that Excel calls it a fire pin is the fiber optic that it, that's on it. And that fiber pin is, uh, I mean, it's superior brightness. I've never seen anything like it. It is really nice. I've shot it low light, shot it in the evenings and the mornings now, and it's the brightest sight I've ever had. So I thought that was really cool. Another thing I've done is the last couple years, I don't know, about four or five hunting seasons now, at least I would say going in my fifth, I've been running a six millimeter carbon access. Basically, it's like a license agreement with Under Armour. And uh, it's a, basically looks like an Under Armour arrow, but it is a Eastern Axis. But it's honestly been my favorite arrow of all time. I, I have different bows and whatnot. I've been able to get a dozen of these every year and just been able to shoot them out of the box. They've been great. So, But one thing I did do is I bought some extra Eastons, and the... Eastern Access, the Under Armour ones that I've been shooting, I have like a little bit of uh, overage off the front of the riser, probably an inch and a half, maybe even two inches. So I cut that down and running a stiffer shaft. So it's a carbon aftermath from Easton. They're much heavier, but I did cut it down to right, you know, almost in line with my riser. So it's barely hanging over the shelf. And it's a stiffer shaft, really stiff, and uh, 
man, it, it shoots bullets. It's a six millimeter as well, but just a awesome, awesome arrow. And maybe I'm assuming just because I cut that down on my front side a little bit off the riser, they shoot exactly like the Under Armour one. So be fun kind of shooting these along with Under Armours and to see what they're going to do for the net, you know, out there at 50, 60, some of these are 80 yards. So it'll be really cool to see, you know, how they fly, how straight they fly, how well they penetrate. But so far I've just been absolutely in love with these uh, aftermaths from Easton. Another thing that I want to talk about real quick is I got a bino harness from Hawken. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but this bino harness, it's kind of like all the rest. Your binos go in the front. You have a cross system, cross back. You have, you know, clips that you can buckle in, unbuckle, take it off and over your head. The cool thing with the Hawken has an option to it that you can actually screw in a monopod, basically, and it attaches right to your binos. So you can be hands-free, you can screw it in, and you can kind of hold your binos there. Now, this isn't something I'm going to run that part of it through tack because, you know, I want to quickly be able to bring my binos up, put it back in the harness. But I will say for what I would love to do come September, you know, scouting, mule deer hunting, this thing's awesome. You screw it in, screws in to a piece that connects your binos. A strap goes over the binos, hold it in place, and it completely vertically holds your binos in place right at eyesight. So you can literally dip your head right into your your eyepieces and look through your binos, binos hand, hands free. So that's pretty cool. So that's a neat, uh, I'll take some pictures of that and make sure you guys leave me some comments, you know, if, if I'll tag it in the next couple uh, photos when we're up there. But uh, really cool, unique kind of niche item from Hawken. So make sure to check that out. But uh, the plan is I'm going to bring some updates just Friday and Saturday from Boyne, from TAC, and just talk about the day of shooting, talk about what we did, how we did it, and, you know, if we shot good, we shot bad, or where we missed arrows, and, and what the situation was. So hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy that. I'm excited to do that and uh, get these next couple shows out to you guys. So as always, deer season never ends. <laughs>